He's going to be preaching on this text, so please hear it. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I will bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people today. In the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God on the highest heaven and on earth peace to those with whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things in her heart and pondered them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. May God add his blessing to our reading of the scripture. Uh, May we pray. Oh, Heavenly God, we pray to you this morning as Pastor Keith comes upon this chancel to preach your everlasting gospel. We ask, Lord, that his words not be his own, but they truly might be those that are inspired by your Holy Spirit. This is we pray, uh, for we need no other prayer than this. Amen. Knock him alive, Keith. So we've been talking about this news and who gets it and how they get it. The news, of course, about Jesus and his birth and his coming into the world. And the first week we talked about when the angel Gabriel appears to uh, this religious man named Zechariah, who was a follower of God, but was without children. And and the angel appeared to him and and said that his prayers had been answered and he would have a, a, a son. And of course, Zechariah, even though he was this religious and holy man, when Gabriel appeared to him in the temple, Zechariah refused to believe that. And Gabriel just said, all right, then you're not going to be able to talk until this happens. And of course, that child was John the Baptist. And, and, of course, and, and very connected, obviously, to the events of Jesus in his life. Then we learned about what happened when the Lord's mother was told the good news by the angel Gabriel and how she had a slightly different response than Zechariah. And she simply said, uh, I am the Lord's servant. May it be unto me as you have said. And, of course, she was intimately connected with the events of the coming of the Lord. And then last week, Pastor Mike talked about Joseph and how he received the good news also from an angel and received it and was determined to care for Mary and this child as his own. He, of course, connected to the events of the coming of the Lord. And now we see these shepherds. These shepherds are the first to hear the news that aren't connected so intimately to the coming of the Lord, but yet are people who represent just regular people in the world. Why why shepherds? Why do the angels tell the shepherds? Probably because this message isn't meant just for the super religious or society's elite. Shepherds were about as normal people as you could get in Israel. And there they are, working the night shift, sleeping with, the, with, their, with their flock, taking care of them. And the angel appears to these shepherds. And the first thing the angel says is, be not afraid. That's, by the way, the most commanded uh, phrase in the Scripture. That's the number one command given in the Scripture is, be not afraid. Because obviously, if an angel appeared to you and told you anything, your first response would to be afraid. I know it would be for me, but there's something about the news that these shepherds receive that turns their fear into joy. It turns their fear into joy. There is joy in getting good news, isn't there? There's joy in getting good news. Everyone loves to get good news. Try to think in your mind about the last time you got really good news. Think about what that felt like to get really good news. Maybe it was something that happened to you. Uh, You got a promotion at work or or something wonderful happened or you got a notice from the IRS that said you paid too much and they were putting money back in your account or something like that. You know, there's joy in, in getting good news, isn't there? 
Everyone loves to get good news, but let's face it, not all good news is created equal. When good news is given just for you, you feel great. But let's be honest. Have you ever got good news that was really just for you and you were a little bit hesitant to share it because you didn't want to make people jealous? Or you didn't want to come across as a person who was bragging because some great thing happened to you. I I, I understand that. You know, last Saturday night, Estelle and I got back from our uh, 20th anniversary trip. We, We celebrated our anniversary this year. We went to Cancun, Mexico. Okay? And our biggest problem while we were in Cancun, Mexico, is that it was a little too hot. And we were kind of sweating out there a little bit. And we had to, we had to like, take a break once in a while from the heat on the beach and, and go back in the air-conditioned room where we could catch some, you know, just some, some nice cool breeze or whatever from the air conditioning. And then we had to try to figure out where we were supposed to eat that night because there were, you know, at least 15 four- or five-star restaurants on this resort, and we had to, like, try to, like, agonize over which decision we were going to make. What were we going to have that night, you know? And so, I'll be honest with you, I see, uh, like, people post pictures when they go on vacation of they're having a blast and doing all this. I knew what was going on back here, because my kids were telling me every ten minutes, right? It's cold. My car won't start. This is going on. That's going on. And, and, you know, because I didn't want to, like, post a bunch of pictures of me on the beach. Still posted a couple, but, you know, she's not as holy as I am. But, uh... Anyone who knows her and me knows that's not true. Um, but I was, I'll be honest with you, I was a little bit like, oh, I'm not going to post any pictures like that because I don't want to, like, you know, rub it in people's faces that we're down here on this trip, you know, in the heat, having a great time, being served everything, you know, and our friends are back home freezing, you know. Good news is great when it's just for you, but, you know, you don't broadcast that to everybody typically. But what about good news that, like, affects a group of people around you, right? What if you had good news that, that you want a free trip and you could take five people with you? Wouldn't that be great news? You would love to share that great news, wouldn't you, with those five people? You tell them, and, and I bet you'd feel excited about that because good news is better when it applies to more people. Because now you're talking about good news that makes other people happy. That's pretty cool. Because now your good news blesses someone else, and that feels good. It's awesome to be a person sharing good news, isn't it? You know, people love to do that. They love to share good news. And they love to share it with other people and see their reactions. Have you seen all these videos that people people take of, like, someone getting good news? Maybe it's someone who's, who's getting ready to tell their husband that, that they're going to have a baby and they have it videotaped so that everybody can see. You know, I see, I see photographs oftentimes of people getting asked to be married and there's someone there to take the photo to show the good news. Or, or when something great happens, people love to see people's reaction to good news, don't they? I mean, I'll tell you how cheesy Pastor Keith is sometimes. I was watching this video of some little girl getting a puppy. Do you guys see that video floating around on YouTube or Facebook or whatever? Some little girl getting a puppy. And they handed her to this puppy, and their parents were videotaping it, and she's bawling. Oh, I got a puppy! Oh, I'm so happy! I'm like, what am I doing watching this? You know? I got a Harley Davidson. I shouldn't be watching this video right now. So I shut it off and prayed for repentance. But the point is this. We love to see those reactions, don't we? We love to share good news with people when it makes their lives better. And we love to see how they react to it because there is joy in getting good news. There's joy in getting good news. Now imagine what it's like to share good news, not just for a few people, but good news for lots of people. Not many of us get to do that regularly, but it's an amazing experience. I, I've been able to do that a few times in my position in the church. You know, I get to talk to lots of people. And I've been able to share good news with lots of people. And that's a fun thing to be able to do, isn't it? You know, when you can give somebody, a group of people, really good news, and then you get to see how they react to it. I mean, do you guys remember a few years ago when, like, Oprah Winfrey would have these shows, and, and like, she would say, Okay, everybody, reach under your seat. And all these people reach out their seat, and then they pull out a box, and inside there was a keys to a new car. And everybody gets a new car, right? Everybody talks about that because, wow, what an amazing thing to be able to give good news to lots of people. 
Now imagine that you have not only good news, but good news that will bring great joy, but not just for yourself or for a few of your closest friends, but good news that will bring great joy for all people. See, that's the kind of news that the angels were talking about when they met these shepherds. The angels announce this good news that will bring great joy for all people. So what is this good news? It's the gospel. The gospel means literally good news about something that has happened or is about to happen. That's what the word gospel means. So the gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news about what has happened with regard to Jesus Christ. And that's good news that brings great joy, not just for a few people, but for all the people. The gospel is the news about what God is doing. He's sending the Savior How good is this news? God is reconciling the world to himself. Paul talks about this, the Apostle Paul, in the book of 2 Corinthians. He talks about why this is such great news. In chapter 5, verse 16 to 21, he, he writes these words. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so now no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us this message of reconciliation. We are, therefore, Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The gospel is about what God is doing in the world. It's about God bridging the gap between humanity and God. Now, if you haven't noticed, there's a gap between humanity and God. But you have to realize what that means. You have to own that. You have to recognize that because of our sin, we are separated from a God who is all perfect and all holy. In Him is no darkness at all. And if we have sin, we can't dwell in the presence of God. So there's this problem that we have, this cosmic problem that the universe has because it's fallen away from its Creator. And there's nothing that religious people can do about it. There's no amount of moral behavior, there's no amount of knowledge, there's no amount of good intentions that can bridge that gap. And when we read in the Old Testament of the law that was given to the people of God, we see that this law was rigorous and burdensome and difficult and none could keep it perfectly. There were some that, that, that came close But the Bible says that none of us, none of us are without sin. And sin is breaking God's law, you see. So we have this problem. And there's nothing we can do about it in and of ourselves. But the good news about the gospel of Jesus Christ is that God has made a way through Jesus for us to be reconciled to God. He's made a way by sending His Son, this baby, to be born in this manger. And through Him, the world could be brought back to God. That is amazing news. But if you don't own the gap in your own life in the first place, then you go, well, I don't even really need this news, do I? See, it's not good news for you if, if you say, well, I don't really need Jesus. I don't really need Jesus. Then it's just good news for somebody else. You see, it's not just enough to hear the good news. There's joy in believing the good news. You've got to believe the good news. Lots of people get good news, right? But that doesn't mean... But they always believe it. Do you believe all the good news you get? 
Are you skeptical when you hear good news at first? I mean, let's face it. We all get good news. I mean, how many of you got emails that say you won? Congratulations. Right? You get those posters. You won. Congratulations. You're the next big winner. You've been a part of some fortune left by some guy in southern Nigeria who you've never met before, and he's left you $90 million. That's good news, right? Do you believe that good news? I really hope you don't. See, just because you get good news doesn't mean that it does anything for you. Because if it's not true, or if you don't believe it, it, it has no effect. See, I get great news on a daily basis, but most of it is a lie. Most of it is a lie. So how do you know? And what happens when you actually do know that the news is true? You know, our first reaction might be to be skeptical or disbelieve, but when we kind of realize, we go, really? Seriously? This might be for real. You know, we got a, a letter in the mail, I don't know, a few weeks ago at our house from, you know, a mortgage company or something, and it said, congratulations, or it didn't even say congratulations, it just said, you know, you have overpaid $3,000 or something on your mortgage this year, so here's a check. And I'm thinking, yeah, this is a scam. There's something up with this. This isn't real, you know. So, so I was like, what should we do about this? I'm like, I don't know. It looks, it looks legit, but they often do. I'm like, I don't think this is real, you know. And then we kind of sat on it. We got another one, and, then, and I said, why don't you go and talk to the bank and find out if this is real? And she sent me a text message. She said, guess what? That's, actu- that's actually true. We did overpay. They just deposited this money in our account. You know? I'm like, awesome. Now we can pay for Mexico. You know? <laughs> so when you finally received it and go, wow, that's true. It's like, wow, awesome. And your day gets brighter, right? When you actually do believe the good news is true, there's an incredible joy, isn't there? There's joy when you finally believe The good news is true. So let's talk about these shepherds. How did they know that the good news was true? Now, let's be fair. They had angels coming down and telling them. I mean, that's a little bit better than an email or a postcard, right? If an angel shows up at your house and tells you something, you should believe it. You can believe the good news, but let's face it, not everybody did. Zechariah, he didn't believe it, right? But the shepherds, they saw the good news and, and they believed it. But there's one other thing that happened with the shepherds, if you looked at the story. The angels told the shepherds that there would be a sign. And what they said about the sign was this, you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. That was the sign that the shepherds would receive. But check this out. The sign was there to confirm the good news But they had to go to Bethlehem in order to see it. See, their faith is what opened the doorway to them receiving the sign. They could have heard the good news from the angels and said, Ah, I don't know. You guys, maybe we ought to think about this. I mean, really, why would these angels appear to us? Maybe, you know, maybe Elijah over there puts something funky in our shepherd's pie and we're all just having a hallucination. I don't know. Maybe we're crazy. Maybe we're sleep deprived. Maybe there's, these are aliens. Maybe there's something going on. I don't know what it is, but you know what? I think we should just stay here, keeping watch of our flocks by night. But that's not what they did, did they? It says they got the good news, and then they went to Bethlehem. They took a step of faith. They put their belief in that good news into action. And when they did so, then they found the sign that confirmed it to be true. How do you respond to this good news? I'm talking about the news of the birth of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the good news of the gospel of Jesus, that He has come into the world, that in Him, did you hear what what Paul said in Corinthians, that, that you can be made new, that in Christ the old is gone, the new has come. For some of us, that's the best news we could ever hear about. Because some stuff in our life has caused us to believe that maybe God isn't for us. Or or maybe we're too far away from God. But we're being told that because of this good news, there's nothing we can do that can go beyond God's ability to love us. 
How do you respond when you hear that? Do you find yourself skeptical at first? Many people do. Many people hear the good news of Jesus Christ and they think that it can apply to everybody else other than them. Many people hear the good news and they think that there's got to be some kind of catch, right? They don't always believe it. You know, there's always that person that's, that no matter what you do to teach them the good news or show them, they're always going to be like, yeah, there's some kind of catch. I mean, I guarantee you that in Oprah Winfrey's audience, there was some old dude sitting in there that when she said, reach under the chair, he said, I'm not doing it. And he looked at his wife, he said, this is how they're going to get you. You know, there's a catch. There's somebody that always has to believe that the good news can't be true. How do you deal with that? What do you do with this good news? Do you believe it? Do you own it for yourself? If you do, then as you step out in faith, you will receive a sign. Many of us pray for signs, but notice what the angel does. The angel doesn't say, here's the sign right here. The angel says, look, the sign's over there. You've got to believe me first, then you'll see it. That's what faith in Jesus is all about. Jesus is not going to come down to you and prove himself to you by every, every scientific method and rational uh, way to prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's real. But those of us who follow Christ can tell you it's been one of those experiences where once we believe it, then we see it. If that makes sense. It's a lot of things in life like that, aren't there? Right? It's a lot of things in life like that. I, I never imagined in a million years that I could love human beings as much as I love my children. Right? I was told that. Right? But once I had them, then I realized that. There, there are lots of experiences where, where we understand things, you know, maybe it's the depth of pain in a certain situation and we can understand it emotionally, but when it's us, it feels differently, right? We walk through things and oftentimes in life, we don't understand them, even though we have all the information until we are in it, then we get it, right? Faith in Jesus is a lot like that. This news is a lot like that. If you would allow yourself to believe this good news, then with joy, you will see the sign. Now, what sign will you see? It's the same sign the shepherd saw. You'll find Jesus. That was the sign. Now, if you don't believe it, it doesn't mean the news isn't true. Disbelieving good news only means that you've missed an opportunity for great joy. It means that you missed the sign. It means that you missed Jesus. And there's nothing more tragic than when someone misses Jesus. We share with them the good news. We tell them about Jesus. And maybe they even act like they believe it for a little while, but they refuse to take a step of faith. And they miss the sign. For some of you, the issue isn't that you haven't heard the good news of Jesus. You've heard the gospel many times. But the reality is you just haven't let yourself believe it for whatever reason. Maybe it's because you feel like you're not good enough or maybe it's because you feel like you're already good enough and you don't need Him. We all have our reasons, don't we? The gospel is about what God has done for us but this news calls us into relationship with Jesus. It requires a response. Now, don't think this is strange. Don't think that this takes away from God's sovereign ability. All good news requires a response. The people in Oprah's audience had to reach under their seat to get those keys. They had to respond. If you actually did win the lottery... Or you actually did have some guy from southern Nigeria send you a check. If it was real, it doesn't do you any good unless you take it to the bank and deposit it. Just because you have it doesn't make it any good unless you put it into practice. The shepherds needed to do more than just hear this good news. They had to go to Bethlehem. And they were rewarded because of it. What do you need to do today? To put your faith into practice. 
to let your life line up with belief in the good news of Jesus Christ? What's missing? Where's the disconnect? Where do your so-called beliefs end and your life begins? Where do they part ways? You should bring them together and believe this news. What changes do you need to make? Where do you need to go? What step of faith is this news asking of you? I can't tell you that for you. But I can tell you this. If you take that step of faith, you will receive your sign. You will see Jesus. So there's joy in hearing good news and there's joy in believing good news, but there's also joy, even greater joy, in spreading good news. Right after the angel announced what the sign would be, a worship party begins in heaven. I mean, that's awesome, isn't it? The angel announces to the shepherds what happened. Then all of a sudden, the heavenly hosts appear and multiple angels break out in this worship chorus. Glory to God in the highest. And they begin to sing. The angels had been anticipating the opportunity to, to share this good news and to spread it. You see, when you get good news, you spread it. And that's exactly what the shepherds did. Once they got to Bethlehem and they saw the baby in the manger, they saw Jesus. It says that they left and they went and they spread the word and they told everybody about what they had seen and about what had happened. There's joy in spreading the good news. When you get good news, you spread it, don't you? I mean, how many of you have been raving about a, a, a show you saw or a restaurant you went to or a, some product that you bought or something great that's happened in your lives? We, we do that. There's joy in being able to say to somebody, hey, you know what? This is going on. Or, hey, guess what? This is amazing. There's joy in that. How much more joy is there when we spread the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, that's what we're called to do. Our mission statement as United Methodists is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In that, we acknowledge that this gap between God and humanity exists and that the world needs to be transformed, but we recognize the joy as disciples are made and people's lives are changed. Don't just keep this good news to yourself, church. Don't just take it and receive it and hold on to it and keep it secret and keep it private and keep it personal. One of the biggest lies that the world has sold to the church is that your faith is supposed to be a personal, private thing. I agree that it's personal, absolutely, but it was never meant to be private. Now, does that mean that you walk around and beat people over the head with the Bible and, 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 and you know, offend people and, and talk down to people? Of course not. That's not how you share any other kind of good news, is it? No. When you share good news with someone, you don't say to them, you know, things that, that, that put them off and that offend them. You say things to them that bring them joy. And then you have joy. You try to share Jesus with somebody and you don't have joy? Whew. That ain't going to work. You should be a Christian. Nah. Come to my church. Nah. No one's going to come to your church if you walk around like it's, you know, the worst thing ever. I mean, you have to have joy because there's joy in hearing good news. And we want them to believe it. We want them to spread it. We're working really hard this year to try to spread this joy. To, uh, to all over Marion. You know, Mike talked about sending out these 3,000 postcards to like basically, where, are I, where am I? Everybody that way in, in Marion, okay? This way will come later, I guess. But we're starting that way. And we've sent out over 3,000 postcards with an invitation to people to come. And, and I pray that that would be um, supplemented by, by all of us personally inviting people, personally sharing the joy Take that step of faith. You'll see the sign. And maybe they will too. So let's receive this news and believe it and spread it. All right? Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for the greatest news the world's ever received, for the news that you've come into this world. And we thank you, God, that you chose to share this with humble, simple shepherds. 
Lord, because many of us can relate to that. We're not society's elite. Lord, we're not the most religious, pious people in the whole world. We're just regular good old Methodists here. And God, we, we thank you that you allow us to, to, to receive this news. Help us to believe it, Lord. God, I pray for any here today who are really struggling to believe it. For whatever reason, God, maybe they don't feel like they measure up. Lord, just show them, God, that you've done all the measuring up that needs to be done. For those who are plagued with doubts, God, I pray that your voice would speak loud and clear to them. You give them courage and faith to step into that relationship with you that they could see that sign. And Lord, for my brothers and sisters here who, who have that and receive it, Lord, but we've just kind of kept it to ourselves. Just prick our hearts this week, Lord. Make our, make our, our minds become aware of opportunities that you've placed before us to where we can spread this good news to a world who so desperately needs it, to people who would believe it with joy if they were told. Lord, use us with this good news. We thank you so much. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.